The human soldier's guts were splattered across my combat armor, his skull crushed in my hand, yet still the persistent bastard kept squirming and stabbing me with his puny knife. I slumped onto the barstool, my battered exoskeleton creaking. The metal pitted and scorched from relentless human weapons fire. The skin on one of my arms terminated in a stubby, regenerating nub, a gory reminder of the raw brutality of hand-to-hand -hand combat against Terran shock troops. I tossed back another shot of Crickler, my mind reeling from the horror and savagery I'd witnessed on the front lines of the Terran War. Excuse me, honoured veteran. A timid voice interrupted my rumination. I pivoted on my stool to see a scrawny tuk-tuk youth, practically a larva, wide-eyed and quivering. Did you really fight the humans? he squeaked. I fixed him with an icy stare, my compound eyes reflecting his terrified face a hundredfold. Yeah, I fought the humans, I growled, my voice like gravel. Halcyon, Epsilon, Eridani. We had orders to take one of their fortresses, place called Fort Charon, built into the side of a damn mountain. Concrete walls thirty meters thick, gun emplacements on every rock, minefields and razor wire as far as you could see. And inside, the most fearless, relentless, unkillable monsters the galaxy's ever seen. The young Tak Tak gulped audibly, antennae twitching. He glanced around nervously before leaning closer. Is it true what they say? That the humans... That they don't feel pain? That they... Enjoy combat? I barked a humorless laugh. Kid, you don't know the half of it. Let me tell you about a human I met. Meanest some bitch in the whole damn third Terran assault regiment. Name of Stephen Howard. Knox takes another swig and continues. We came in hard and fast. Dropships screaming through the atmosphere, pulse rifles charged and ready. I remember the moment the ramp dropped, and we got our first real look at the fortress. It was like a damn mountain itself, all grey and imposing. He shakes his head. We should have known right then what we were in for. But orders were orders. We advanced, covering each other with suppressing fire, just like in training. But these humans, they didn't fight like in the simulations. The younger Tuk Tuk's eyes widen. What do you mean? Knox grimaces. They didn't just hunker down and defend. They attacked. A squad of them, led by this Stephen Howard, came charging out of a hidden tunnel right into our flank. They were whooping and hollering, firing from the hip. It was chaos. We were supposed to be the ambushers, but suddenly we were the ambushed. He absently rubs his regenerating arm. Howard, he was like a demon. He wielded this archaic weapon, an assault rifle, they called it. Damn thing spat metal slugs, if you can believe it. Crude, but Emperor's teeth, effective. He cut down my squad mates like they were hatchlings. I saw him take three pulses to the chest, and he just kept coming. The young Tuk Tuk shudders, his mandibles clicking nervously. How, how did you survive? Knox's compound eyes take on a distant look, as if peering back through time. Sheer dumb luck, mostly, and a bit of cowardice, if I'm being honest. When I saw my squad getting torn to shreds, I hit the deck, played dead. Howard and his men, they just stepped right over me like I was another corpse. They were focused, determined, utterly fearless. He drains the last of his drink, slamming the glass down. That's the thing about humans, kid. They don't fight like us. They don't fight for glory or honor or even survival. They fight for each other. For their brothers in arms, they call them, and that makes them more dangerous than you can possibly imagine. The young Tuk Tuk nods slowly, trying to process the veteran's words. I... I think I understand, sir. Thank you for sharing your story. Knox waves a dismissive hand. Bah, don't thank me. Just remember what I said. If you ever find yourself facing down a human, you'd best pray to whatever gods you believe in, because you're going to need all the help you can get. The young Tak Tak leaned forward, his compound eyes wide with rapt attention. What happened next? he asked breathlessly. Knox's gaze grew distant as the memories flooded back. I had no choice but to engage him directly. Howard was single-handedly decimating our forces. We exchanged fire, both of us seeking cover and trying to outmaneuver the other. By sheer luck, I managed to land a shot hitting him square in the gut. He collapsed. Knox paused, taking a shaky breath. The glass in his hand trembled slightly. 
For a moment I thought it was finally over, but then, to my utter disbelief, he started laughing. This human, bleeding out on the ground, had the audacity to laugh in the face of death. He locked eyes with me and taunted, That all you got, bug boy? Then, incredibly, he staggered back to his feet, one hand clutching his abdomen, and resumed firing. Knox downed the remainder of his drink in one gulp, and signaled the bartender for a refill. We had no choice but to fall back. We radioed for artillery support, hoping to bury the humans under a barrage of shells. The fortress shook as our bombardment rained down. Finally, as the dust settled, an eerie silence fell. We thought surely we must have prevailed. Her shudder ran through Knox's battle-scarred body. But then, amidst the rubble and debris, we heard it. Laughter. This rasping, pain-filled laughter that chilled us to our very cause. And there, dragging himself from the ruins, was none other than Stephen fucking Howard. One leg blown off, innards spilling out, yet still he laughed in defiance. Knox's voice dropped to a haunted whisper. With his lone remaining arm, he raised that damned rifle and resumed firing. It took a barrage of shots to finally put him down for good. But by then, the damage was done. We had sustained catastrophic losses. Our only option was a full retreat. The young Tuk Tuk leans forward, enraptured by the tale. His antennae twitch with excitement as he asks, What happened then? How did you survive? Knox takes a deep breath, his compound eyes flickering with the intensity of the memory. It was a close thing, kid, too close. We were locked in this desperate struggle, neither of us willing to yield. Howard's cybernetic leg gave him an edge, but I had my own enhancements. We traded blows that would have shattered a lesser being's bones. He flexes his regenerated arm, as if reliving the sensation. I managed to get a grip on him, tried to crush his throat, but he just grinned that mad grin and slammed his forehead into my face again and again. I could feel my exoskeleton cracking, my vision blurring. Knox pauses, his gaze distant. I thought I was done for, but then, by sheer chance, one of my squadmates managed to get a clear shot. Took Howard right in the side of the head. He went down finally in a spray of blood and bits of metal. He shakes his head as if in disbelief. I collapsed next to him, utterly spent. My squad had to drag me out of there. We'd won, technically, but it sure as hell didn't feel like a victory. Howard had torn through us like we were nothing. And the look in his eyes, even at the end, it, it haunts me still. It haunts. A grim chuckle escapes Knox's mandibles. Kid, if there's one thing I've learned, it's to never assume a human is dead. Especially not one like Stephen Howard. But that's a story for another time. He taps the side of his glass, signaling for a refill. For now, let's just say that humans have a way of surviving things that would kill any other species ten times over. And Howard, he's the toughest of the tough. Knox leans back, his eyes glinting with a mix of respect and fear. Mark my words, kid. We haven't seen the last of Stephen Howard, not by a long shot. Knox's compound eyes glittered darkly in the dim light of the bar. Believe me, kid, there's a part of me that regrets it every damn day. But in that moment, seeing him lying there, broken and bleeding, he shook his head. I don't know. Maybe I was just tired of all the killing. Maybe I thought it was the honorable thing to do, or maybe deep down I was just afraid of what would happen if I tried to finish the job and failed. The young Tak Tak fell silent, contemplating the veteran's words. When he finally spoke again, his voice was hesitant. Do you think... Do you think the humans are unbeatable? That we never stood a chance against them? Knox considered the question for a long moment. I don't know about unbeatable, he said at last, but I do know this. They're unlike any enemy we've ever faced. They're not just tough. They're relentless. They don't know the meaning of surrender. And they've got a kind of... A kind of collective insanity, I guess you could call it, this willingness to throw themselves into the meat grinder again and again as long as it means their comrades might live to fight another day. He shook his head. I've seen a single human take on a whole squad of our best warriors and come out on top. I've seen them charge into certain death, laughing and screaming all the way. And I've seen them get back up after taking wounds that would put any of us in the grave. Knox leaned forward his voice dropping to a whisper. 
So no, kid, I don't think they're unbeatable, but I do think we're in for the fight of our lives, and Emperor help us all if we underestimate them again. Knox's voice drops to a haunted whisper as he recounts the psychological torment inflicted by Stephen Howard. The young Tak Tak listens, his eyes wide with a mix of horror and fascination. So it was like he was everywhere and nowhere at once, Knox continues, his gaze unfocused as he relives the memory. One moment he'd be taunting us from the east, the next we'd hear gunfire from the west and his laughter over the comms. He shakes his head, mandibles clicking in agitation. My troops were on edge, jumping at every shadow. They'd fire at the slightest movement, wasting ammo, giving away our positions. It was chaos. Knox's voice takes on a tone of grudging respect. You have to understand, this wasn't just some grunt with a gun. Howard was a master of psychological warfare. He knew exactly how to get under our skin, how to exploit our fears and weaknesses. He leans forward, his scarred exoskeleton glinting in the dim light of the bar. At one point he started reciting this old earth poem, something about hunting the hunter. His voice was calm, almost casual, even as we heard the screams of our comrades in the background. The young Tak Tak's antennae quiver as he tries to process the horror of the situation. How did you survive, T? he asks, his voice barely above a whisper. Knox barks a humorless laugh. Survive? Kid, there were moments out there when I wasn't sure I had, when the only thing keeping me going was the knowledge that if I faltered, if I let my guard down for even a second, Howard would be there to end me. He drains his glass, the liquid burning his throat. But I knew I had to keep going, had to keep my troops together, because if we broke, if we gave in to the fear, then Howard had already won. The young Tuk Tuk's eyes widen in disbelief. He challenged you to hand-to-hand -hand combat? After all that, what did you do? Knox leans back, his exoskeleton creaking. What choice did I have? I couldn't let him continue his reign of psychological terror. I had to end it one way or another. He takes another swig of his drink, his eyes taking on a faraway look. He shakes his head. He just grinned that mad grin and stood up, cracking his knuckles. Thought you'd never ask, bug boy, he said, and then he charged. Knox's grip tightens on his glass. He was fast, Emperor, damn him. Faster than he had any right to be. I barely had time to brace myself before he was on me, throwing punches left and right. He absently rubs his jaw. I gave as good as I got, but it was like hitting a wall. He just kept coming, absorbing blows that would have put any of our warriors down for the count. Knox laughs, a harsh grating sound. Beat him, kid, I never said I beat him. He drains the last of his drink, setting the glass down with a thunk. We fought for what felt like hours, trading blows in that ruined parking structure. I landed hits that cracked his ribs, shattered his cybernetic leg. But he just kept coming, laughing through the pain, spitting blood and taunts. He shakes his head. In the end, it was a stalemate. We were both battered, broken, barely able to stand, but neither of us would yield. The young Tak Tak's eyes were wide as saucers, hanging on every word as Knox recounted the brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat with Stephen Howard. By the Emperor, the youth breathed. How did you survive such an ordeal? Knox let out a humorless chuckle, his compound eyes glinting in the dim light of the bar. Survive? There were moments I wasn't sure I had. That human, Howard, he was relentless, unbreakable. He leaned forward, his battered exoskeleton creaking. I remember the feel of his flesh under my claws, the sound of his bones cracking as I squeezed. But no matter how hard I hit him, no matter how much damage I inflicted, he just kept coming. Knox's gaze grew distant, lost in the memory. I had him in a chokehold, my arm wrapped around his throat, squeezing with all my might. I could feel his pulse pounding against my exoskeleton, could hear the air wheezing in his lungs, but he wouldn't go down. He flexed his claws as if reliving the moment. Instead, he reached up, grabbed my arm and started pulling. I could feel my plates cracking under his grip, could feel the muscles tearing. The pain was blinding, but I couldn't let go. I knew if I did, it would be over. Knox shook his head, 
his antennae twitching. We were locked like that, straining against each other for what felt like an eternity. My vision was starting to blur, my strength fading, but just as I thought I couldn't hold on any longer, he went limp. He let out a shaky breath. I thought it was a trick at first, another one of his ploys, but he was out unconscious. I'd finally managed to choke him into submission. The young Tuk Tuk leaned back, mandibles agape. Incredible, he whispered. I've never heard of a human being beaten in hand-to-hand -hand combat before. Knox snorted. Beaten? No, kid, I hadn't beaten him. I'd merely survived him, and just barely at that. He took a long pull from his drink, his claw shaking slightly as he set the glass back down. Even then, as I stood over his unconscious form, I knew it wasn't over. I knew he'd be back, knew he'd find me again. It was only a matter of time. The youth shook his head in disbelief. How do you face an enemy like that? An enemy that doesn't know fear, doesn't know when to quit. Knox met his gaze, his eyes hard. You pray, kid. You pray to whatever gods you believe in that you never have to. Because mark my words, a human like Stephen Howard, he's not the kind of enemy you beat. He's the kind you endure. And you hope, in the end, that you're the one still standing. The young Tuk Tuk's eyes were wide as saucers, his mandibles slack with disbelief. You... you let him live, after all that? Knox nodded, his gaze distant, haunted by the memory. I did. Emperor knows a part of me regrets it to this day. But in that moment, seeing him broken and beaten at my feet... He shook his head. I couldn't do it. Not like that. It would have been... dishonorable. He leaned back, his exoskeleton creaking. I limped away from that place, every step a struggle. My body was battered, my mind reeling. I'd faced the demon of my nightmares, and somehow, impossibly, I'd survived. Knox's voice dropped to a whisper. When I found my way back to my squad, they were celebrating. We'd taken the colony, achieved our objective. But as I stood there amongst the cheers and backslaps, I felt hollow. Empty. He met the young Tak Tak's gaze, his compound eyes glinting in the dim light of the bar. That battle, that war, it changed me, kid. Made me realize that there are some enemies you can't defeat, some horrors you can't unsee. Knox drained the last of his drink, setting the glass down with a heavy thunk. We may have won that day, but the cost, Emperor, the cost. I lost good soldiers, good friends. And for what? A strip of land on a backwater planet? the fleeting glory of the Imperium? He shook his head, his antennae drooping. No, kid. In the end, there are no winners in war, only survivors, and even then a part of us dies out there, on those blood-soaked fields and ruined streets. Knox fell silent, his gaze turning inward, lost in the dark labyrinth of memory. The young Tuk Tuk sat motionless, scarcely daring to breathe, the weight of the veteran's words settling heavy on his narrow shoulders. In that moment, in the smoky confines of that dingy bar, a profound truth passed between them, a truth as old as time, as immutable as the stars. War, for all its fire and fury, for all its tales of glory and valour, was a beast that devoured all, victor and vanquished alike. The young Tak Tak opened his mouth, a question forming on his mandibles, but Knox held up a claw, silencing him. No more, kid. I've said enough. Some things, some things are best left in the past, where they belong. He pushed himself to his feet, his battered frame groaning with the effort. Just remember what I told you. Remember, and pray to whatever gods you hold dear that you never have to face the likes of Stephen Howard, because if you do... Knox left the thought unfinished, hanging in the air like a specter. With a final nod to the wide-eyed youth, he turned and limped away, disappearing into the shadowed recesses of the bar, a living ghost, haunted by the unkillable spectre of humanity's most fearsome warrior. The young Tak Tak's antennae twitched as he processed Knox's words, his compound eyes wide with a mix of awe and disbelief. You... you saw him again? At the peace treaty signing? Knox nodded, his gaze distant, as if peering through the veil of time, I did. It was a surreal moment. 
There we were, two old soldiers, standing on opposite sides of the room, him in his dress uniform, me in my ceremonial armour. We locked eyes across the expanse, and for a moment it was like we were back on that battlefield, locked in our eternal struggle. He leaned back, his exoskeleton creaking, but this time there was no violence, no clash of weapons, just a heavy silence, laden with the weight of all we'd seen, all we'd done. The young Tak Tak leaned forward, hanging on every word. What was he like in that moment? Knox closed his eyes, the memory playing out behind his lids. He looked tired, not just physically, but in his soul, like he'd carried the weight of the war, the weight of all those lives lost for far too long. And yet, beneath that weariness, there was still that fire, that unbreakable spirit, that had made him such a formidable adversary. He opened his eyes, meeting the young Tak Tak's gaze. After the ceremony I found him outside, he was smoking one of those human cigarettes, the smoke curling around him like a shroud. I approached him, not knowing what I would say, what could be said, between two beings who had tried so hard to end each other's lives. Knox's voice dropped to a whisper, but he spoke first. Bug boy, he said, you made it. Those simple words, spoken with neither malice nor triumph, struck me harder than any blow he'd ever landed, because in that moment I realized that to him I had been more than just an enemy. I had been a worthy adversary, a mirror in which he saw his own indomitable will reflected. He shook his head, his antennae drooping. We stood there side by side, looking out over the ruins of what had once been a thriving city. The silence stretched between us, filled with the ghosts of the fallen. And then I asked him the question that had haunted me for so long. Why, I said, why do you fight like you do? Why don't you ever give up? The young Tak Tak sat back, his mind reeling from the implications of those words. Knox continued, his voice taking on a grave, prophetic tone. In that moment I understood. The humans, they don't fight for glory or for conquest. They fight because it is ingrained in their very being, a fundamental part of what makes them human. And that, young one, is why they are so dangerous. Because a being that fights not for reward but out of necessity, out of an unbreakable drive, that is a being that can never truly be defeated. Knox stood, his tail coming to an end. He looked down at the young Tak Tak, his eyes hard yet tinged with a deep abiding respect. Remember this, young one. Remember the lesson of Stephen Howard, for it is a lesson that our species forget at our peril. The humans, they are not like us. They are something other. And if we ever find ourselves facing them again, across the battlefield, I fear that no force in the galaxy will be able to save us from their fury. With that, Knox turned, his battered form melding into the shadows of the bar. The young Tak Tak sat frozen, his mind a whirl with the implications of the veteran's words. Outside, the stars glittered cold and distant, a silent witness to the tale of two warriors, two enemies, two beings forever changed by the crucible of war. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88, I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.